This is just a quick notebook of uh, some of the different methods of dealing with the Lego graph security that we have. It's all documented extensively in our actual documentation, but here are just a few examples of how to do it in Python in this Jupyter notebook. So we start by um, you know, importing the necessary packages and uh, defining a quick function that'll make the visualization a little bit nicer later. Okay, so the first method we're going to look at is uh, you know, for our strategy one is uh, role-based access control on the repository level, meaning that very simply we're just going to allow or not allow people to view certain repositories on the server. So starting there, uh, we're going to create a new repository as the super user. Um, and then add a few triples into it. So first we create repo one and we have three different triples in there. So we have, um, you know, study one is of type study. Study one has label study one. And study one has topic. Why number one is the most beautiful number. And just as a quick note, I, I am adding a fourth element to all these triples. Uh, so just just take note of that for a later example that these triples also include graph one or study one as the graph. So then next we create a second repository called study two, still as the super user, and add a very similar set of triples, uh, but this time with graph study two. So now we're going to connect not just to an individual repository but we're gonna to connect to the actual server uh, as the super user. And again, you can only really do this as super user anyway. So right now, the only two users we have in this on the server are super user and test, but now we wanna add two new users. So we define user one and the password name and user two and, and their password, and then just print, uh, do the same command to show uh, or list all the existing users right now. So we see that user one and user two have been added. Then for user one, we're gonna give read write access to study one and user two, we're gonna give read write access to both study one and study two. So and then once we've done this, we're gonna list user access for both user one and user two. So we can see, right, user one has read write on study one and user two has read write on study one and two. So now as user one, we're gonna try and query data from study one, which to have read write access to. So, you know, we get the expected three triples uh, that we would be looking for. But now if we try to um, query anything from study two as user one, as they don't have read write access, we're going to run into an error, which is why this is all in the, the try accept um, structure, right? So we get a 401 error. You do not have read permission on this repository. So that makes sense. Then just to show, we connect to study one as user two and see all the data. And then we connect to study two as user two again, and again, see everything. Now, just as an example, we're also going to delete user access. So user one is going to lose read write on study one and user two is going to lose read write on study one and study two. And then we'll show that user one and user two no longer have any um, user access anywhere. So now kind of a, a variation on this example is we are going to add two different roles. So now we're going to have two roles on the server and give those roles read write access so role one has read write on study one role two has read write on study two and again we see uh that role one has read write on these you know on the before mentioned repository so now if we connect again so now we're going to we're going to connect to study one as user one and try to query but we're going to run into this error of not having permission but if we add user one to role role one we will now be able to query the data because role one has read write access on study one and then 
obviously the same would work for roll two, but didn't think we didn't think that was necessary to show. And now we're going to delete role access again, uh, and then also actually delete the roles. So right, role one and role two have no access anywhere. Okay, so now we are going to create a new repository that combines both sets of triples from the first example with their different graphs. So again, we should have uh, six triples in the graph and. You can see here that we have triples about study one and we have triples about study two in the same repository. So now we're gonna create a new user, user three, and also create a role three and add user three to role three. And then finally give role three access to this new studies repository. So now role three can query for all of the data, right? So they can see all six triples, but we're gonna add a role security filter saying that role three is only allowed to see triples with graph study one. So we add this filter in and then run the query and we see that now they only see the triples about study one. So for all these triples, really the graph should have been, or is study one as well. Again, we, you can do this for any of these parts of the triple. Study one also could have been the subject because they're you know, the start of all these triples anyways, but we, we end up using the graph a lot, especially in healthcare data, um, where we talk about a patient and can then look for all triples about a certain patient. Okay, and then the third example is we're gonna move on the triple attributes and then corresponding user attributes. So again, we create a new repository called patient data, and we wanna um, import the, the necessary packages for using user attributes. And then we're gonna define an attribute. And this, this will be used for security purposes. So, Certain triples are going to be of secondary use, extended primary use, or primary use, where primary use is, uh, in our case, the most secure, right? And you know that because we just we say that the ordering of this list is true, meaning that it goes from low to high in these values in terms of um, importance, in our case, security. And then we also say every triple needs at least one and is only allowed to have one of these attributes defined for it. So we're, we're gonna set this attribute definition and then add two different files. So in these files, so every, every triple in this file is gonna have the attribute primary use and every uh, triple in this file, this NT file is gonna have attribute secondary use. So again, that's kind of low security. We add those triples in. And then most importantly, we set the attribute filter. So we say that the triple attribute that we defined here, so we, we call that use, um, is less than or equal to the attribute given to the user of that same triple attribute. Meaning that if a user is given attribute secondary use, they will not be able to see all the triples that are designated as primary use because they do not have the needed security level. So we'll show that in the actual example. So we're gonna set that filter and then again, create a new user and a role and add that user to the role. And then just to be able to use attributes, our triple attributes, we have to set a few additional role permissions. Um, allowing it to be able to use it in queries and query via HTTP. Um, so yeah, so again, we're gonna um, connect or create the user and the role and then give that role access to the new data, the new repository. And then it only happens through a proxy. This assumes the user never directly accesses the repository and we set user attributes for the user that will only last the length of the session. Uh, and then to do this, we then execute the query, which additionally includes the Franz prefix for using user attributes, which we defined up here and saying that this role is allowed to be doing that. So first we connect 
um, or we are connected here to patient data and set the user attribute as secondary use. So now if we query, we only see 13 or 14 triples about the US. But now if we set the user attributes to the higher security primary use, we then are able to see all the triples in the graph because they have a higher security clearance and are allowed to see everything. So I hope that makes sense. And then um, moving on to strategy four, which is a template-based RBAC. And th this is mostly for ease of use. If you are, you know, you're, you have a database and you need a whole bunch of different users, you don't want to kind of manually have to create all these users and give them those permissions one by one. So this allows you to create a template based on one user and then allow, and then it allows you to create new users based on the template of existing ones. So first we're gonna connect to this templates class as the, the super user and show there's no existing templates right now, but um, we're gonna again, just add some things to our user to make sure they have some interesting things like the permissions and security filters and then create a user template for this user. So out of the template and we can see that there is now a template for user four that has, this user has a role, has these permissions and these filters. Um, and now we wanna create a, a new user, user five, um, and we also give it the new password and we want them to be based on user four. So now we have um, the newly created user, which will have the exact same template as, as user four. So it's a little, this, this little step is a little bit, or this last step is a little unnecessary because you don't actually need to create a user template on user five, but it just allows you to see that user five has the exact same template as user four. So this Jupyter notebook was a little bit more based on um, kind of, you know, small examples of slowly building it up. And then we have another one that we can move to now, which is more of a specific use case example, um, which we use for a lot of our healthcare data. So again, we first want to create some new user after we've connected to the server as the super user. So we create two new users and they already existed, but um, you know, this is the way you add new users. And then we also create two new roles. So we create a provider and we create a data scientist. And then we wanna make user one a provider and we wanna make user two a data scientist. So again, we give these two roles read write access to the repository we're working with and then we define a list of predicates that a certain user or a certain role may not be allowed to see. So in our case, we don't want a data scientist who's working with this data to actually be able to see real social security number, password numbers, real names, addresses, or zip codes. So what we do is for each predicate in the disallowed predicates list, we add a role security filter saying the data scientist is disallowed from seeing these predicates, right? So we loop through these list of predicates, adding filters. So if we connect to the repository, oh, sorry, I have to remember to actually run the commands. Um, if we connect to the repository, we show that user two who has role data scientist cannot successfully query for a subset of these predicates, right? So we have, we connect as user two, who is a data scientist. And if we try to query for a social security number, passport, or first and last, or a first name, we get empty results. However, um, just to be sure, the data scientist can still see a bunch of other data 
in the graph. So it's not like they're completely locked out of all the data. But if we connect as user one who has the role provider who might need to see social security number, passport, and that kind of data, they do in fact get all the the actual info back. And uh, just just to be sure, just for uh, you know important reasons, this is all synthetic data. Just <laughs> before you get worried. Um, okay, so that's this is a, a, an example we use a lot in our healthcare work. Um, so now we're going to move on to a more specific use case where we can filter by triple attributes. And in this case, we're still working with the different roles of a provider and a data scientist, but we want the data scientist to see different names or fake names of a, of a patient rather than, or as opposed to what the provider can see, who can see the real data, but just so there's still data there and a, um, data scientists can easily query for it to show examples if they wanted to. But anyway, so we're going to create a new role. I think this, this case, in this case, this person will already exist, but we're going to create a new role and give them the permissions and uh, access that they need. And then we're going to connect to this repository as a super user again. And then this current set of data um, has these triple attributes defined for the list of disallowed predicates. So for something like social security number, the data scientist will have a different version of that info from the provider because we've added two different versions. But if you connect as a super user, you can see both versions of a triple. And we're actually gonna show this with, with names like I mentioned before. But so we're gonna define an attribute filter, which is an overlap of the triple attribute given to the role and the, tr the user attribute of the role. So again, the provider can see if, if you give a user the attribute provider, then they can only see triples that have uh, that have been designated as a provider by the triple attribute. And then we also have a set of triples that don't have any attributes because we're only working with the disallowed predicates list and there's a lot more data in there. So regardless of whether they're a data scientist, a provider or a super user, they can see all that other data as well. But anyway, so we define this filter and then in the, just as an example, in the actual interface of AG WebView, you can see the static filter that's been defined and the triple attribute. And now we're gonna connect to AG Healthcare as user three and give them the role of provider, right? So now we get data back, we get a patient identifier, we get a first and last name, but then we're gonna connect again, but this time give them the user attribute of data scientist and see a different set of names for um, these patients. So we can see that the first element of this data frame is going to be the same element here, but so they're, they're the same, but the names are different. Um, but and just to grab the this for a later example, uh, if we connect as a super user, we can actually see the two different first names for the same identifier here. So this. What one good example we might use this for is in um, something like a medical or a clinical note where a provider can see the full note, but the data scientist can only see a anonymized version of the note. So they, that note won't have any of the names, but they can still do machine learning and NLP on those notes, regardless of whether the names are there or not. So I hope, I hope these, exam these examples have been useful. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions.